at train derailment, 4,000 people exposed to dangerous chemicals that, you know, we, we should, that people should not be around. Yeah, I know. It's, it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting indeed. Because here, let's go ahead and bring this up here. So, in the, in the aftermath of last year's fiery train derailment in eastern Ohio doesn't qualify as a public health emergency because widespread health problems and ongoing chemical exposures haven't been documented, federal officials said. What? The Environmental Protection Agency never approved the designation after the February 2023 North Folk Southern derailment, even though the disaster forced the evacuation of half the town of East Palestine and generated many fears about the potential long-term health consequences of the chemicals that spilled and burned. The contamination concerns were exacerbated by the decision to blow open five tank cars uh, filled with vinyl chloride and burn the toxic chemical three days after the derailment. Huh. The topic of public health emergency came up in emails obtained by the Government Accountability Project Watchdog Group through public records requests. But EPA response coordinator Mark Duro said the label, which the agency has only used once before in Libby, Montana, where hundreds of people died and thousands were sickened from widespread asbestos exposure, doesn't fit East Palestine, even though some residents still complain about respiratory problems and unexplained rashes. Officials also believe the agency had enough authority to respond to the derailment without declaring an emergency. The Royal said the reason a public health emergency uh, isn't uh, being considered is that we have not had any environmental data about ongoing chemical exposures in the extensive air, water, and soil testing program. So in other words, there, there, is, there, there are no health problems in East Palestine, Ohio. The EPA said in a statement that the order uh, it did issue telling Norfolk Southern it was responsible. Yeah. Okay. They sent a, they sent a strongly worded letter to Norfolk Southern that was responsible for the damage declared that the conditions at the derailment site may constitute as an imminent and substantial endangerment to the public health or welfare of the environment. So the agency said it didn't see a need for a public health emergency because it had legal authority it needed to respond. But area residents like Jamie Wall see plenty of evidence that their hometown has become a disaster every time they open Facebook and see posts about their friends, kids, covers rashes, or struggling with chronic nosebleeds. Other posts talk about the smell of chemicals returning after heavy rains. I want to pull up this video here. Shout out again to uh, Citizen Free Press. Let's play it. The president's Environmental Protection Agency about why that agency did not declare a public health emergency after last year's train derailment involving toxic chemicals in East Palestine, Ohio. Here's Chief Washington correspondent Mike Emanuel. The Environmental Protection Agency never declared the massive derailment in East Palestine, Ohio in February 2023 a public health emergency, even though the derailment forced about half of the community to evacuate. The story was first reported by the Associated Press. Internal EPA emails revealed there were concerns about the consequences after chemicals spilled and burned. Quote, there could very well be dioxin concentrations in the area due to the low flame temperature combustion occurring at the train cars. Dioxin is a highly toxic chemical compound, but EPA stopped short of a formal declaration. Quote, the issue of declaring a public health emergency is a difficult one, we have the authority, but have only used it once. Watchdog Group, the Government Accountability Project, obtained the emails after making a public records request. Its conclusion, quote, taken as a whole, these documents reveal EPA's dereliction of duty to protect the public and the environment. President Biden visited East Palestine a year after the- One year after. One year after. Now, Pete Buttigieg, or as Biden called him, booty juice, that was so funny. Now, you know, he, he he was there, but he didn't look like he knew what he was doing. By the way, you know, a sinking suspicion, and this is just a speculation. This is just a speculation. I'm probably wrong about this, and this is just my opinion, and we're all entitled to have opinions. But I'll never forget when this crisis first happened and how you had Hollywood celebrities vote blue no matter who people who are supposed to be the good guys who's supposed to be compassion saying oh those people of east palestine deserve that they voted republican they voted for trump i remember that i remember what a lot of celebrities and people said you remember what all these jag off vote blue no matter who people and celebrities said about the people of east palestine ohio now let me be clear here i don't know anyone from east palestine ohio i don't know anyone there 
And I don't care how they voted in the 2020 election, and I don't care how they voted in the 2022 midterms or either at how they're going to vote in 2024. But I do know this. They are American citizens, and this administration failed them. Now, I am not an expert in chemicals or other dangerous materials of that nature, but I do know that when they are, you know, introduced into, you know, the water, the soil, the air, when they're burnt and blown up and people are exposed to it, there's going to be some long-term health consequences. You may not see it now, but it's going to happen down the road. How do I know that? Because I did not one, but two documentaries in Indiana, in East Chicago, where we covered about how you had industries, you know, polluting our fresh, clean drinking water, the soil. And everything else in between. We did not one but two documentaries. So I know for a fact that those people are suffering. And they were not taken care of. And maybe a suspicious mind would say the reason why nothing was done is because of maybe how they voted. If you don't think we have vindictive people in our government and positions of power, I'm so sorry. You need to know this. I could be wrong. And this is just probably a speculation. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. The disaster. Working with the state, we've tested the air, the water, the soil quality, deployed teams of health experts. Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance has blasted the EPA's handling of the crisis. What the federal EPA has made hard to do is to actually get the toxic dirt out of East Palestine in the first place. And I'd say it, Brett, I think that this is all about politics. Local residents say they don't think they'll ever be able to go home. It's horrific. All of our items uh, that were special to us are all stuck in our house, and we can't go back because it's filled with toxins. The EPA says it was open about the dangers when it told Norfolk Southern it was responsible for the damage, arguing the conditions there may constitute an imminent and substantial endangerment to health. It insists a public health emergency wasn't needed because it had the necessary legal authority. So the question is, with this disclosure, whether Congress takes this ball and holds hearings. One would think they would. You heard how fired up Senator Vance was on your program. And so uh, it would seem to be something that people in Ohio, Pennsylvania and elsewhere would be greatly concerned about and would be under Congress's jurisdiction. All right. Mike, thanks. You bet. Madness and insanity. Here, let's pull up this other video here, too. Well, for months, in the wake of the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, residents have been complaining about a variety of health issues they believe stem from that incident. And now we're learning that the EPA determined the Ohio disaster does not qualify as a public health emergency because no widespread health problems have been recorded. News Nation's Rich McHugh has been following this story since the very... Now I want to pause here because that is a serious problem, seeing those dangerous smoke and fire continue on and how people were exposed to it. Because as soon as that fire happened, as soon as those chemicals reached the soil, the air, the water, I mean, the damage is permanent. And when those heavy rains do happen, those chemicals get delodged. They get once again reabsorbed. They once again get put into the environment again. Nobody did their job. The EPA didn't help out those people. And one can wonder if there was malicious intent of not doing anything. I want to pull up this article here again from the AP. Associated Press, federal and state officials continue monitoring for additional problems in the small community near the Pennsylvania border, according to the uh, journal. The EPA uh, it also keeps testing air and water in the area as it oversees the railroad railroads work to clean up the mess. Let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for Kit. Norfolk Southern is a responsible business and they're going to do the right thing. You awful man. You awful man. They're going to do the right thing. Type two. Nobody's going to do anything at all. Norfolk Southern is still going to keep on collecting that paycheck, and the EPA ain't lifting a finger. He reiterated that some of the agencies, uh, more than 100 million tests of air, water, and soil ever showed concerning levels of chemicals apart from the soil immediately around the derailment that was dug up and disposed of last year. In recently disclosed emails, the EPA lawyer tells one of its PR people it was best not to get into this. When he was asked whether a document explained the agency's order telling Norfolk Southern to clean up the contamination from the derailment should include anything about medical benefits. That kind of aid, which can include Medicare coverage, is only available if the EPA declares a public health emergency. Whoa, let's read that again. That kind of aid, which could include Medicare coverage, is only available if the EPA declares public health emergency. That means the government's got to take care of the people, pay the bills, and so proud with Norfolk Southern. 
And I think we all know how the government feels about taking care of the American people. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can't declare a public health emergency because then you got to take care of the people. Those 4,000 people. And probably there's some administration official and some vote blue no matter who people who are just like, nah, you don't want to take care of them. Those those are Trump supporters, right? Because you can't take care of the people. Just going to read that again. That kind of aid, which would include Medicare coverage, is only available if the EPA declares a public health emergency. But again, there was no data suggesting that was necessary. And to this date, there is no data to suggest that suggests that, that, that that's necessary. The railroad has spent more than $1.1 billion on its response to the derailment, including more than $104 million in direct aid to East Palestine and its residents, partly because Norfolk Southern is paying for the cleanup. President Joe Biden has never declared a disaster in East Palestine, which is a sore point for many residents. The railroad has promised to create a fund to help pay for long-term health needs of the community. But that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. Very beginning, he joins us live now with more Rich. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, the the troubling thing is that we're getting these documents through Freedom of Information Act, which is a a, a FOIA request. And basically, we're learning that the EPA made a decision not to declare a public health emergency just three weeks after the officials there burned these train cars. The email in question is from Robert Kaplan, the EPA attorney, in an email with the EPA PR, when asked whether a document telling Norfolk Southern to clean up the contamination should include anything about medical benefits. He writes... Agree with you, Jeff. The issue of declaring a public health emergency is a difficult one. We have the authority, but have only used it once in Libby, Montana. Best not to get into this. Bob, best not to get into this, he said. Leslie Pacey with the Government Accountability Project, I asked her why they would would have been reticent to declare a public health emergency. Take a look. If If they admit it's a public health crisis, they have to admit that they participated in this public health crisis, which was allowing an open burn of chemicals, which should never have happened. And it was against their own statutes. And if they admit this, then they have to admit that there's some culpability from the EPA there. But here's the thing. The EPA made this decision not to declare a public health emergency on February 20th, less than three weeks. after. Look at that, that explosion. They declare not to do this, folks after the burning of the tank cars and after they had already found dioxins at the site of the burn. We went to Libby, Montana last fall, a town uh, poisoned by asbestos in the mine, but the EPA didn't declare a public health emergency there until decades later. But in East Palestine, their initial testing done at the drilling site shows the presence of dioxins, the most carcinogenic compounds on the planet. And in June, CDC Dr. Arthur Chang uh, gave residents there a very sober assessment. One thing that we can, we, we can agree on, the exposure happened. It happened. We have symptoms. It, it's documented. Yet no government agency, not the EPA or the CDC, have tested residents' health. One independent group has, Erin Haynes from the University of Kentucky. She tested 400 residents uh, who live within a mile of the burn. Take a look. Three out of four of the participants reported having at least one new health symptom. And that within a mile of the derailment, 80% of the respondents um, reported a upper respiratory health symptom. 80%, so all year long we've been documenting these ailments, Kelly. We've also reached out to the EPA for comment on this and they have yet to respond to us, but we'll be sure to bring that to you when they do. I want to pull this up here. Miss Witchy Perfect says the rich want to ration the water, and this is how you do it. Poison the water. Because believe you me, if rich folks, if rich folks want to control everything, they will. If rich people want to make sure that you are struggling day in, day out, they will make sure you go through it. Okay. We have sociopaths running the government. We have psychos who run everything. And unfortunately, the people of East Palestine, Ohio are entitled to Medicare coverage. Because again, as I read in the article, Norfolk Southern has yet to do the right thing. Set up that fund for emergency relief for 4,000 people because this is a corporation. Now, corporations care about one thing and one thing only. Profit, 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 profit. And again, more profit. Nothing in there. 
Does it say they have to care about their workers or public safety or anything else in between? You can't expect the corporation to act humanely. Okay. They're, 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 they're just not going to do it. And you can't expect their government to do that either because they're owned by corporations and hedge fund managers and Wall Street executives and big banks and lobby groups. But just just like the healthcare insurance industry, just like the prison industrial complex, military industrial complex, trains also have a lobby group there too. And Norfolk Southern made sure it put enough money in the back pockets of both Democratic and Republican lawmakers. And so thus agencies, federal agencies, are then put in a little precarious spot where they're stuck with a quandary. Do they do their jobs or do they just follow orders and hopefully dust it under the rug and no one will notice? Well, people are noticing. And the long-term health consequences for the people of East Palestine will continue to happen. And the people of East Palestine, Ohio, are not Republicans or Democrats. They are American citizens who were exposed to dangerous chemicals because, one, our infrastructure is falling apart. Two, we have corporations that are able to allow no accountability, no regulations. And then three, we have a corporation that's basically going to get away with it. Now, they say they're putting in all that money. But in the long term, the people are on their own. Many of those people are probably losing their homes. Many of those people are wondering when they can ever go back to normal. The EPA could have done the right thing, but they didn't.